welcome back to Heroes of on YouTube. My name's Sean. Um, this is episode two of um, How to Prepare for a Waterdeep Dragon Heist. We are <clears throat> going to talk about uh, several different little things today, mostly about the actual city of Waterdeep. Um, but the thing I wanted to get into first, sorry, I still got this baby monitor. The uh, baby is taking a nap and the wife and the oldest one are off for the afternoon. They're gone for the afternoon, so I'm doing this right now while I have a chance. Um, so, one of the things I wanted to discuss with you guys is that I don't have a very awesome looking background. You see behind me here, there's a half of an Ottawa Sens flag and like a rally towel right here and then a, an old collection of DVDs and, and video games. Not really very aesthetically pleasing. I see a lot of these videos that are on YouTube with uh, this kind of content and they've, they're sitting at a desk and they've got their, you know, their tch tchotchke set up in the back with all these minis and busts and um, board games and uh, they have novels or uh, like the campaign settings for like maybe they'll have like the actual Waterdeep Dragon Heist books set up behind them. I just don't have the room or the, 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 the actual place to do that here. Um, this is a practical living area. This is our basement where the kids play and where we watch movies and we don't have, I don't have a man cave. I don't have an office. Um, I'm literally doing this just kind of in my common space. But I thought that maybe I could try to finagle a couple little things and set up a couple of areas to see if they would work better than me just sitting on the floor here um, uh, on the, at the coffee table. So um, here's a couple of attempts at trying to have a workable area for this show. All right, well, the first area that I have set up here is pretty much at the bottom of a bookshelf. Um, all my D&D &D &D stuff is all sitting here. All my 3.5 stuff. I've got some Wheel of Time novels here. Behind me is like Dresden Files, Numenera, a bunch of other things like Shadowrun. Um, it's all really situated at the bottom of this bookshelf and I uh, don't have the time or energy to move it somewhere more accessible, but I thought that maybe sitting here on the floor like this might produce good uh, good viewership. People seem to like people laying down all sexy like on the floor. No, this just got really weird and creepy. Okay, yeah, this isn't a good idea. All right, well, here's option number two. Option number two is in front of this uh, Ikea shelf. I have a bunch of stuff set up here that uh, kind of represents role-playing and, and my love for games. I've got some uh, R.A. Salvatore stuff here. There's this really cool diced tower that uh, one of the heroes, Mike Watson, made. Look at this thing. Look how beautiful that is. Um, there's, uh, you know, some board games and a couple of little miniatures. Here's a uh, Wizard of Oz miniature that my wife loves so much. Um, there's a couple of little things here. I, I think this looks kind of nice, don't you think? Yeah, I know. Feels a little forced. I'm not even, there's nothing really to put any work on. I, I need a place to put papers. I don't even have a table. Uh, yeah, this feels really forced. Okay, uh, let's try something. I have one last option. Let's try one more thing. Oh, are you enjoying your tea? Yeah, would you like a little bit more? Excellent. There you go. Uh, a little bit for myself as well. Oh, hi there. Uh, this is the third option and final option that I have in front of all my kids' toys. I really don't really have any other place to go, but I sort of like this one. I've got a table here I can put all my work on. And I'm having tea with this penguin and Clover, the uh, blue ribbon bunny from Sophia the First. So I have beverages and snacks, this nice orange cake. So I think this probably is the best, op best option, eh? All right, well, I guess we'll just go back to the couch. All right, well, now that all that silliness is done, we can actually get to the meat of the actual episode. We're here to talk about, yet again, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. Um, the first thing that I want to talk about is just, you got to read the book. Just read it all the way through, one time, from front to, to back. Um, it's a really great read. Even if you intended to run it and you end up not ever running it, read it anyways. It's a really cool story. Um, a story that could go many different ways with really neat uh, NPCs. They, they really outdid themselves this time. I'm very impressed with the, the, the book and the story. And most uh, D&D campaigns happen like, you know, um, in a typical dungeon format. Um, this is a little less so. It's more of like a Ocean's Eleven meets D&D type. You know, there's a, a caper and a heist and uh, you have... Um, you have to kind of do some 
lots of diplomacy and not not as much i mean you could get into combat but the fact that you're in a town you don't really want to fight so much because you could get arrested and end up in jail and then it might take three weeks or two you know two two days or three weeks before you get out um that's stuff we'll talk about later about the uh, uh um, code legal um the uh first thing that i think is really important is that at the very back of the book is um a thing called uh, Volo's Waterdeep Enchiridion. And it's kind of like a, a grand tour of, um, of Waterdeep. So at some point in the game, Volo, Volo from Volo's Guide to Monsters, he's actually a character in, the, in this game. So at some point in the game, he'll uh, give you an offer to take you on a tour of the city of Waterdeep. The characters, I mean. And if the characters say yes, then you can hand over a copy of this uh, Volo's um, Waterdeep and Tridian, and they could read it, and then that's the tour. That's easy as that. They don't have to pass on any information throughout the game. They'll just learn about Waterdeep through his tour. But there's nothing saying that they're going to take that tour. They could end up saying, no, we don't want to take the tour. And so you have to be the one to convey all that information to them throughout the game. So it's really important for you as the DM, if that's who you are watching this, it's important for you to read that part first, I believe. I believe that reading the Entridian first before you read the, the adventure is really important. And I'll tell you why. The, the reason is there's a lot of little flavorful stuff in that part. It really creates Waterdeep as a character in itself. And I think that that's what uh, uh, Chris Perkins was trying to do. He's trying to kind of create... A game where the city of Waterdeep is just as integral as its PCs and its NPCs, its factions, um, all that stuff. The actual city is as much of a character in this as your characters are going to be as well. So if they say no, then it's up to you to convey all that information that's in that tour to them throughout the game. Um, you know, to tell them how uh, the uh, the streets are really well labeled in Waterdeep, and that's you know you can. You can really, there's street signs, and depending on the ward that you're in, the street signs are nicer or, or, or less so. Um, to, to explain about the sea ward, the dock ward, the castle ward, all these different areas, and each flavor that exists in each of them. To tell them about the um, uh, the, the past, the history of Waterdeep, which is a very interesting one. I'm not, we won't get into too, too much about what it is here. I'm not here to review that part of the book. I'm just here to tell you that when you start to plan your game, I would read... Uh, Volo's uh, Waterdeep and Tridian first before you read the rest of the book. Because I did it the opposite. I read all the adventure and at the end I read the, uh, the, the, uh, the tour. And I wish I had read the tour first because then when you go through the actual adventure, you're going to have points of reference for some of the things that is happening in the action. You're going to be like, oh yeah, I remember that from the tour that Volo gives. So it'll be real. And, and Volo's tour happens at the beginning of the whole campaign. So it makes sense for you to read it first, I, I think, anyways. But that's just my my advice. Um, the other the other interesting thing that I found that I think that we should uh, uh, that you should do is I found uh, um, on D and D Beyond's YouTube channel I found a series of interviews by uh, Todd Kenrick, and he interviews uh, Chris Perkins, the lead designer of uh, Waterdeep, uh, Dragon Heist, and Matt Merles, the Matt Merles. So the two of them talk about um, the the four different uh, villains, um, Manshoon, um, uh, Xanathar, Jarlaxle, and then the uh, noble couple, the, um, I'm not, I can't really say their name right now. Anyways, the, the four main villains um, and how they are uh, different from each other and how they're unique to themselves their motivations they those interviews are really castellanders that's what their name is anyways sorry to get back to it um they uh, uh they give a really good uh overview of what their motives are and uh what you should kind of think about whenever you're running your game uh, the the really neat part is that you you get to choose which of those four is your villain and um, if you listen to this, the the um, the YouTube uh, channel with uh, Todd Henrik, it's interesting to see the makers of D and D talk about those characters. It just gives you a nice in, uh, introduction to them. If you if you're not already um, acquainted with these characters, Xanathar obviously is the Xanathar to guide of everything. 
Um, Manchun is um, a major foe of Elminster and has been for many, many novels. Um, this one, though, I think is a clone, but that's something you'll you'll get into when you read the book. Um, Jarlaxle being a friend or foe, both neither uh, of uh, Dritz Duerden in the uh, um, R.A. Salvatore for Forgotten Realms campaign. And uh, Castleliners, I believe, are, are unique to this game. I've never heard of them. Um, if they are in any of the other novels before, I just don't, um, don't know about them. But the person they uh, um, have an alliance with, making them the bad guys, that's a character that is well known in D&D lore, but we won't get into that either. Um, so uh, so when you before you pick your villain, I would suggest going on to D&D Beyond and looking at uh, those videos and watching those interviews, just because it kind of gives you a neat idea from the, um, the makers of the game. So uh, the next part of this, I uh, need to tell you who I picked for my villain. Um, I like all four of them. They're all great. Um, I've read um, most of the uh, the four different seasons, so spring, uh, summer, fall, and winter. Um, those are the four different paths you can take in the game. They all happen at different times of the year, and each one of the seasons is associated with one of these four villains that you take. So I decided to go with Xanathar, only because I like Beholders. Beholders are really cool. I've never, as a DM... Okay, sorry about that. I had uh, technical difficulties there with the iPad for a second. So the um, uh, so yeah, I picked Zan Xanathar, and I really like him. Um, I've never played a, a Beholder before. Um, I uh, I <laughs> the main reason why I picked him was because I have this customer at work. I'm a cook. I work breakfast. I'm a breakfast chef at a, a breakfast chef at a cafeteria, and I have this customer who comes in, and he always wants soft bacon. That's what he says. Can I have soft? And he says it really low. He's very soft-spoken like that. Can I have soft bacon? So anyways, there's another guy that I work with who always wants to talk to me about this guy, about this soft bacon guy. And he always goes, hey, did you, uh, did you serve soft bacon today? And I'm like, that's what we call soft bacon. Did you serve soft bacon today? And I'm like, yeah, I served soft bacon today. But the other guy tries to do the impersonation of soft bacon guy. And he goes, soft bacon. So when he talks like that, I thought, ooh, I'm, I might have to use that voice for my villain in the Dragon Heist game. So now I'm walking around going, soft bacon. And I'm trying to perfect my Beholder voice for whenever I run the game. The funny thing is, is that so far the only thing that uh, Xanathar is going to say in the game is soft bacon. Because it's the only thing that I can do in that voice. Soft bacon. And it sounds awesome. I just wish that soft bacon was like, you know, how there's like a, you know, a hundred thousand words for snow or whatever um, in, in uh, the uh, northern uh, la uh, Aboriginal languages. Well, I wish that soft bacon, like I am Groot style, soft bacon meant a bunch of different things in Beholder. So I could just say soft bacon, soft bacon. Anyways, that's just an aside. That's the, something that runs through my, my brain whenever I'm, I'm thinking about this, uh, this campaign. So... The uh, the last thing I wanted to do live on the game uh, on the show here was I have a map at the back of the book and I wanted to unattach it in front of you and we could take a look at it together for the first time. I have not looked at it yet and I'm very excited to see what it is. I'm trying to be very careful here because I'm sort of a klutz so I don't want to rip my, my precious map. Um, one of the things I did read about it, which was really cool, is that it's the... So it's a map of Waterdeep, obviously, but it has two sides. One side for the players, and one side for me. So this looks like the side for... Oh yeah, so here. So this is the side for the players. This is what you get to see. We'll have this hanging up in um, in our game room, wherever we end up playing. Probably at Mike's place. I'll have this hanging up on the wall. And then what I'll do is I'll take a picture of this side, which has all these little extra little notes for me to remember. This is exactly where this scene takes place. This is where another scene takes place. So all that stuff is for me to be able to know. 
but I don't want them to see it. I don't want them to even know about it. So I'll just take a picture of this and then I'll be able to zoom in on my phone and be able to really kind of keep that part secret. Anyways, we'll just toss this to the side for now. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the end of the show. I uh, wanted to say thank you to everyone that watched the last episode. Um, we're up to like 45 views now. I'm probably sure 20 of those is my mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> um, so uh, anyways, I just wanted to say thank you. And um, hopefully you're enjoying stuff on Instagram. We just started up our uh, Facebook page this week. I don't have Facebook, but one of the heroes is taking care of that, hopefully. And uh, we will, next episode, next week, we'll be talking about characters and factions. So in the book um, are a bunch of different factions that the characters can join. And in order to be able to really start preparing for that and figure out which factions they might join, I'm going to need to have the characters, the players make their characters. So that means uh, Mike, Jay, and Phil are going to have to make their characters this week. I think I know what Mike's going to make. Jay is still largely um, unmade, but I think he's pretty sure what he's going to make. But I think Mike's already made his character. And Phil, well, I think Phil's coming out, uh, over tonight to, to actually roll stats and uh, make characters. So I think that we're going to try to do interviews with all three of them about their characters. And uh, just like a quick like a minute interview just to talk about them and what their names are and you know what they're looking forward to the game. So just something a little different to mix things up. Anyways, uh, hopefully you enjoy the episode. Um, comment below if you, you did, and if you didn't, if you think that was something that I could change or do differently, uh, comment below as well. All right, thanks a lot, and see you next week. Bye. Well, here's the first option I have. Um, this is my bookshelf where all my novels are, and at the bottom here is all my D&D stuff. Um, man, this is really uncomfortable. Here's the uh, one of the first options that I have. Sitting here at the bottom of my uh, big bookshelf is all my D&D... What was that on the blanket? Is that... What is that? I'm here with all my D&D books, all the 3. Point... What is that smell? What is that? We're here with some really cool tchotchke and some novels and... Uh... Oh, jeez. Well, here's the second option that I have, I'm surrounded by some of my D&D stuff. Oh, Clover, can I interest you with a spot for a spot of tea? Oh, you would. Excellent. And a little bit of cream and sugar. Oh,